All right, you know the drill. It's tier list time. Today I am ranking all of the world wonders in Civilization VI. An important thing to note, as with all of my tier lists, these rankings are weighted from playing on Deity in single player against the AI. Every single tier list video that I do, there's someone that always, without fail, comes in and goes, okay, but on multiplayer, okay, but playing against my friends. And again, this is specifically for single player Deity. Now, another thing, this is a tier list video that's an opinion piece, so there are going to be different opinions on this. And I do like that arguments and conversations happen because they lead to engagement and uh, the comments can be spicy. But my only request is just don't be a jerk. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Starting off, we're just going to jump right into this. We're going to go into Alhambra here. All the, all the wonders are listed from A to Z. So we're just going to go right into it with Alhambra. Now, Alhambra, it's a medieval era wonder. It is mostly for military uh, domination type stuff you get. Uh, you do get plus two amenities. You get great general points per turn as well as a military policy slot. Uh, but this, I'm ranking it into a D tier. It's okay. I think the, I think this wonder, this is one of those wonders, there's a couple of them in this game that are more geared towards specific leaders. And a good example of Alhambra is for Gorgo. Gorgo gets an extra combat strength from a military policy slot. So this just gives her permanent combat strength to her units. Uh, additionally, this also does give you plus two amenities, which ever since the change, oh, I guess it's almost two years now, two years ago at this point, ever since that amenities are actually important. Now, plus two amenities is, is not a bad thing to have at any point in time in the game. So uh, I think D tier is pretty fair. I don't think that this is a, a great wonder. I think it is very useful in tiny little limited circumstances and the only circumstance really is uh is is getting uh gorgo and using it with her now among us scott oh, did you say the sus word uh a munson scott research station this is like i said just with alhambra this is one of those wonders that is very specific to a uh, a victory condition i guess all wonders are in that aspect um with this uh what it does is it gives you plus five great scientist points per turn. Uh, additionally, it gives you plus 20% science and 10% production in all cities. Now, the caveat is it has to be built next to a campus uh, on a snow tile. So you have to settle a tundra city basically in order to get it. If you do have five snow or snow hill tiles within three tiles of that city that you settled it, it does double the yield. So you get plus 40% science and plus 20% production in all cities. So this could be like an absolute game breaker for uh, for science victories. And so with that, I, ha I do have it. I do have this wonder into C tier. It is a high C tier only because of how specific it is to science victories. Obviously, if you're playing a culture victory, the Munson Scott is not going to do anything for you. Domination victory, Munson Scott, like it is, it is geared towards one specific victory. It is a high C tier, however, um, and because of how late it comes into the game, right? You don't get it until a Cold War, so you're not getting it until the end of the game. You don't have to build this to win a science victory. It does help. It gives you an insane amount of production and, and science in your games. Uh, but because of how good it is for science victories, I think a, a high C tier is a, a good ranking for it. Now, if, if it didn't double the yields, if you had the extra snow tiles, it might it might go down to even D tier. Um, but I think uh, I think right in the middle of the pack, high C tier, low B tier is, is a good spot for Among Us, Scott. Next on the list is Angkor Wat. Uh, this wonder, I, I rarely build this wonder. Um, I do think it's decent. I think it's a lot more decent than I than I used to. It is it is one of those ones that it kind of is in an awkward position. It's built in medieval fairs, uh, so I have it in C tier. I have it kind of below uh, Munson Scott in C tier. It, it is useful for every type of victory type, so you don't have to get it for one specific condition. However, it, what it does, it gives you plus two faith, which I don't really care about that, but plus one population in all current cities and built, as well as plus one housing in all cities. So if you are playing specifically tall, this is this is really nice as it makes your cities grow even more. Um, it does need to be built next to an aqueduct, so you do have to build an aqueduct in a city. This synergizes really well with the Kamai, uh, as well as any other sieves that can just grow a lot uh, but i think c tier i think it's all right it's not a great wonder it's not anything crazy it's just it's okay apadana apadana i used to highly favor apadana in uh in almost all of my games i used to think it was one of the best wonders of all time it's so good and so i have it into b tier here i think it's a decent wonder um it comes along really early now the reason why i used to 
favor it a ton is because the AI just would never build it. <laughs> now it kind of seems like the AI either builds it immediately or doesn't build it until like a turn 130. So you can you can regularly get it. Um, but what it does, it, it you get it around political philosophy. Well, you do unlock it with political philosophy, but it has to be built next to a capital. It, it gives you plus two envoys whenever you build a wonder. So uh, inside that city. So if you are spamming wonders inside your capital city or uh, well, it has to be adjacent to your capital. But if you're spamming wonders next to your capital city or in your capital city, then this is you, you should get Apadana pretty early on. So it, the only thing is that it does give you like a finite amount of um i guess bonuses because if you aren't if you can only you can only you only have so many spots to build wonders and if you're only building like two to three wonders then you're only going to get you know six extra envoys in the game which i mean that that could help out so but you could also kind of get that with running you know gunboat diplomacy or if you run containment and just double your envoy uh double the dun, double the amount of how much your envoys are worth then you know it doesn't really matter but Early on, especially, this is a this is a great wonder to have. It does give you two plus great work slots too, so for culture it is pretty nice. So I have it into B tier. It's a low B tier, but it's up there. A uh, Ben, large Ben, big Ben. Uh, this this wonder here is one of those ones that can just absolutely, <laughs> absolutely just change the game for you if you uh, if you build it at a right time. Uh, large Ben, big Ben here. Uh, if you don't know what it does, it uh, gives you, well, I guess it's changed now with, with, I always forget that it's changed with Gathering Storm, but it, whenever you build it, your treasury is increased by 50%. So obviously if you have 5,000 gold in your treasury, you gain 2,500 extra gold. Uh, this synergizes really well with economic sieves, Portugal, Dido, Cleopatra, Matsumusa. Um, it gives you plus six gold and three great merchant points per turn. It also gives you an economic policy card slot. Uh, and it, I feel like it's built in a really good time. It's built in, in the industrial era. Um, it does it does require to be built next to a river adjacent to a commercial hub. So you do have to plan it out pretty carefully. Uh, but Big Ben is up in A tier. I think this is a great wonder. Um, it benefits every single victory condition that you're going for. You can never not have enough gold. Gold will help you. It's it's a it'll help you no matter what. You know you can use it to buy builders, buy settlers, buy units, buy buildings. Whatever it is, you can never not have enough of it. So uh, Big Ben up into A tier. Now the next wonder is one of my favorites. It's one that was introduced in the uh, New Frontier Pass. It is Biosphere. Now this one here is one that I used to think was pretty garbage, honestly, when it first came out, because I didn't really understand it. Um, it gives you plus one appeal to tiles adjacent to rainforest and marsh in your empire. Uh, additionally, it also gives you, the, the main thing about this is it it gives you plus 200% power for all offshore wind farms, solar farms, wind, uh, geothermal plants, all renewable energies. It gives you plus 200% power. Now the buildings and those improvements provide tourism equal to your power. So this is actually a really good culture victory wonder. And I've made multiple videos on this on how to win with only building uh, renewable energies and winning with the biosphere because the plus 200% power equals uh, tourism. And that's just an insane amount of tourism that you can get from tile improvements. Now, you do have to build a neighborhood to build it. Uh, and it has to be next to a river, so it's kind of a weird, awkward placement. Uh, it is unlocked really late. It does require synthetic materials. So when if you are doing this type of culture victory, you basically just play a science game until uh, you get to this point. Uh, this also is useful for... Um, uh, this is also useful for... for, for what's it called um science games too because of the extra amount of power that you can you can generate for all of your renewable energies so i have this into b tier i think it's a good wonder i think it's a decent wonder um it's good for most victory types the only thing maybe is you know domination you're not going to get it uh nor you're going to get it in diplo either but uh or religion but i think of because of how good it is it uh for for science and culture it belongs into b tier Bolshoi uh, is a cultural wonder. Um, it gives you, oh, what does it give you? Two two great writer points per turn as well as musician points per turn. Uh, one slot of writing and music. And you also get two free civics when it's completed. Now, it has to be built next to a theater square on Flatland. Uh, I used to I used to value this one. This is kind of similar to Apadana where I used to value this and build it in every single culture game. But lately, I've kind of found that it's kind of lackluster. I mean, you only get one slot of writing and music, so it's not 
super beneficial. I'd rather just build like a broadcast center, for example. Um, the nice civ the civics are nice, but if you're if you're playing a culture game and you if you're max min maxing your culture enough, you don't necessarily need to worry about those free a civics because you're going to build them in a couple turns anyways. So uh, with Bolshoi, I have it into B tier. I still think it's a good wonder. I just don't think it's absolutely crazy. It's it's definitely not an A or S tier wonder. Um, I I like building it uh, because it's pretty easy to place. You know, you just build a theater square and you can build it kind of nearly everywhere. Obviously, it has to be built next to flat land, but. Anyways, yeah, B tier for Bolshoi. Broadway, this is another cultural wonder here. Um, it is unlocked with mass media. It's a modern era wonder, so it's pretty late into the game. Uh, I do enjoy this wonder quite a bit, though. It gives you a lot of great writer musician points per turn, uh, as well as a, a couple, two, two works of music, as well as one work of writing. Now, I like this better than Bolshoi because it does give you plus 20% culture in that city um, but i do have it still into b tier it is a high b tier it's generally it's like right almost a tier um, i do think it's better than bolshoi just because of the extra culture into that city plus 20 percent in your capital city if you're doing a high culture game is a lot of extra culture so uh it is pretty late into the game and it's unlocked by mass media which is a very very late civic and at that point you should be probably pumping out rock bands anyways so uh it's nice to have it's just extra culture it doesn't hurt at all so uh, i have it into b tier like i said it's a very high b tier uh but it's still b tier nonetheless next on the list is casa uh casa is i think one of those wonders that is kind of underrated uh, i think i for at least for me watching other especially other content creators i feel like this is one of those wonders that a lot of people just don't build for some reason um i mean i guess it does take a valuable slot or adjacency slot for a district on a government plaza right you it has to be adjacent to a government plaza um but you can kind of get away with that if you if you just place maybe some theater squares around it to help with some or to take up the lack of adjacency that you're losing so with this i i also have this into b tier i think this is another good wonder um you gain three governor promotions which is pretty crazy uh also if you all of you if you have a bunch of cities on a different continent than your capital uh, you you gain 15% production faith and gold in those cities. They have to have a governor in them, but so Casa is definitely one of those wonders where if you're playing tall, you you should absolutely 100% get uh, if you have a continent split because you're going to be having governors in every single city, uh, and so you might as well just get the extra uses out of it. You do get plus three great merchant points from it, but the governor promotions is the big aspect. So uh, B tier for Casa, I think it's a, I think it's a good wonder. All right, Chichen Itza. Uh, I th this is one of those wonders that I think is not as good as people make it out to be. There are some wonders that, I mean, I it is nice to build. You'll see people build it and be like, oh my god, this is such a good Chichen Itza city. When all it really does is just kind of give you, you know, just yield porn. <laughs> like, like uh, you know, Moz does or, or Petra. Um, but you get plus two culture and plus one production on on, on all rainforest house for the city. Now, you the, once you do get the the point where you can lumber mill rainforests, uh, this does actually become a pretty nice wonder because then you have just a bunch of rainforests uh, that have a ton of production and extra culture on it. So you can get you know maybe uh, t t ten to fifteen, ten to sixteen extra culture, which is nice to have. But I find that it doesn't the culture really isn't. I don't know, an incredible way of uh, utilizing Chichen Itza. If you do maybe preserve around it, that'd be pretty cool, but I don't know. I just feel like the extra culture really isn't that worth it when you're building Chichen. It's nice to look at, but it's nothing crazy. So I have it down to C tier. I think it's a, an okay wonder. Um, I think it's a little overrated. I think it is it is one of the more overrated wonders in the game. Um, it's all right. The extra production is really nice though for Rainforest, especially if you can build this early on because by the time you get... Uh, Oh, what is the the um, what is the civic for for rainforests? I oh I don't remember off the top of my head. By the time you get to it, uh, and you could build rainforests or uh, lumber mills on rainforests. I think it's merc yeah, mercantilism. Uh, then it's it's uh, it's all right. I don't know. I think it's okay. Long story short, overrated wonder, but it's still not bad. Colosseum. Oh man, Colosseum is our first S tier wonder. This is, at least for me, I think I would argue this is probably the best wonder in the game. It's it's absolutely insane. Uh, I don't care about the culture. Plus two culture is whatever to, to that city. Um, but the extra amenities to each city center within six tiles of the city means it is crazy. The change on cities to 
to, or the, sorry, the change on amenities for this is just uh, the fact that this wonder comes so early too. It comes into the classical era. You get it with games and rec. It's just, it's just bonkers. You do have to use a valuable district slot for an entertainment complex. So there is that, um, and you have to build an arena in it. But the fact that you get, pl get plus two amenities, uh, for every city, um, within six tiles of, of where it's built means you, you can kind of plan it and do a little districting or I guess planning around it kind of how you would with like Lady Six Sky uh, and building cities around her capital you do the same thing with Coliseum plan around it I, I have gotten a nine city Coliseum before um, and I've seen people do like tens it's it's bonkers I've seen people do some very optimized Coliseum planning and people might be wondering well why why do amenities matter so much when you're doing this and and the difference between uh, an ecstatic city as well as a a uh, happy city. If a city has more than three amenities in the city, uh, all of the city's non-food yields increase by 10% and the population growth increases by 20. Uh, so you gain an extra amount of production and things along those lines just by having an ecstatic city, which this matters in a uh, in space races because of the extra production you get at the end of the game. There's just a lot of uses for it. Amenities are really important now and the fact that you get these in multiple cities just by building this really cheap 400 production wonder is, is pretty ridiculous. So S tier for Coliseum, a fantastic wonder to build. All right, following Colosseum, we have Colossus. Now, this is a nice wonder to look at, um, but I don't, I mean, I think it's okay. It's a C tier wonder. It's decent. It's nothing, I don't know, incredible. You, ga you gain a, uh, uh, a free trader as well as plus one trade route capacity, which is nice. Um, you also gain a uh, plus one great admiral point per turn, but I think, I mean, the extra trade route capacity is, is pretty nice. It is 400 production, so it's basically building a trader and a commercial hub and a market it's cheaper than building a new trader commercial hub and a market so um and you don't have to build a new city to do that so that's kind of nice uh but it's an okay wonder i think c tier is very fair for it it's nothing like absolutely bonkers it gives you a free trader and that's basically the main reason for building this so playing someone like portugal playing a, a trade heavy civ is always really nice because you can get portugal you can play with uh you know dido or whatever and get an extra trade route and that just benefits you even further so Colossus, nothing too much to say about it. Uh, I think C tier is very fair for it. Christo Redentor, Christ the Redeemer. This is another one of those wonders that is uh, that is a fantastic wonder to have. I'm just going to immediately put it into A tier. It it's a great wonder. Um, Christo Redentor gives you tourism from all of your relics and holy cities are not diminished by other civilizations who have researched enlightenment. Uh, that is a civic. Um, enlightenment uh, halves the tourism, religious tourism effects versus your civilization. So this basically takes that away. Um, it, this is really good if you're doing religious relic tourism. Uh, additionally, it also doubles the tourism of your seaside resorts. So if you are planning a bunch of those as well, this is really nice to have. Uh, it does have to be built on the hill, but that's really about it. You unlock it pretty late with mass media. So this is kind of another late era wonder like Broadway. Um, I think it is better than Broadway, however, because you are easier i think it's just the amount of tourism that you get from cristo redentor is just one of those one of those wonders that is i don't know i just think it's a really good wonder to have um i used to think it was a lot better uh but i, I think now with more experience in the game more stuff that i've bored that i've played a lot more gosh what am i saying <laughs> now that i've played a lot more of the game and have a lot more experience i think it's uh i think it's a, just a good wonder in general so a tier for cristo redentor uh just really good wonder Eiffel Tower, um, for me, at least from thinking about it here, Eiffel Tower is another one of those wonders, uh, or I think it's okay. I have it down into C tier. It's, it's all right. All it's really good in very specific situations. So if you're trying to build a lot of national parks to win a tourism game, it's very good in that aspect. If you are playing as Bull Moose Teddy, this is like a must have wonder. Uh, but aside from that, it's kind of useless, honestly. Um, it is very expensive it's 1600 production you don't get it until steel so it's one of those ones where the reason why i do, i tend not to like it especially in culture games where oh, i'm only going to gain a couple national parks you have to go bottom tree to get it whereas most of the time you want to go top tree so you can get to computers faster to get that extra 25 percent tourism modifier so it's kind of out of the way when you're building culture games uh so i have it into c tier it's really good at what it does for what you want to do, which is give you appeal for national parks. But other than that, there's really no other reason to build it. 
Estadio. Estadio is another wonder that needs to be built next to an entertainment complex, just like Coliseum. And it does basically uh, just an amplified version of Coliseum. It gives you plus six culture and then plus two amenities for every single city in your civilization. That's plus, that's the culture and amenities goes to every single city. So like I said, this is just an amplified version of Coliseum. Uh, the only thing that it is, this, this is in B tier. The only reason why this is not higher is because of how late this comes. You don't get it until professional sports, which is one of the latest texts before you jump into uh, the end game here. It, because of how late this comes, because you're more than likely going to be winning by that point, those last 20 turns, Estadio really isn't going to give you the necessary amenities that matter in the end game. So it's whatever. It's still a good wonder just because of the because of how strong amenities are in general. But I don't think it's anywhere close to a Coliseum, which you can get within the first 30 turns of the game. So uh, Estadio B tier, I think, like I said, I think it's just one of those wonders where it's good, just not as impactful as uh, a Coliseum is. A Temenonki is the other, one of the other wonders that was introduced in the New Frontier Pass. You gain plus two science and production in every single marsh tile in your city, as well as uh, if you have a bunch of floodplains in the city that this is built, you gain plus one science and production in that. Um, it has to be built on a marsh or a floodplain though, and it's very, very early wonder. Very, very early wonder. It's, it's, you get it in writing. Um, I have a Temenonki into B tier. Now this could almost be put into a tier of its own. Uh, I, th I thought about making a tier in this tier list called, uh, the, the, the tier list where you just don't get any of the wonders. Um, basically the deity tier list. And a Temenonki might be might go into that tier list because if you're going to get a Temenonki, you need to have a really good reason. You have to be playing on like a wetlands map, or you have to have a lot of marshes in your your the beginning of your empire to rush riding and to chop it out because it's going to be gone by turn 22 most of the time. So, uh, but if you can get it, it is a very strong wonder. Uh, so that's why I have it into B tier. I don't think it's in its in a tier of its own, the deity tier list, or sorry, the deity tier, uh, because you can get it. I've gotten it in my games, but it's pretty close to there, so uh, I think B tier is pretty fair. Forbidden City is one of those wonders that I honestly always forget about, if I'm being honest. Um, it's it's a uh, wonder that comes along in the Renaissance era. It is unlocked by printing. Uh, it gives you plus five culture and plus one, one wild card policy slot. Uh, and it just has to be built next to the city center. And I actually think it is a pretty... I'm going to put it into A tier. I think this is actually a pretty decent wonder. I think anytime you can get an extra wild card policy slot, that is always very beneficial because, you know, there may be multiple times where you need to run something like... Um, obviously, this comes before it, but maybe you need to run like Corvée while running colonization because you're building a wonder and a bunch of settlers at the same time. Uh, or maybe you're playing a faith-based game and you want to be running Scripture while running, you know, a another uh, very impactful card like Corvée or Gothic Architecture. So having uh, an extra wildcard policy slot, especially semi-early on in the game, like I said, this is Renaissance, is I think is very strong. Especially if you're playing as a Civ that gets extra wildcard slots in the in the first place. So I think, yeah, Forbidden City, I think I had it in B tier in my list, but I think I'm putting it up into A tier because just thinking about it, I, I think it's a, a better wonder than I, I used to think it was. Uh, with that, we move on to the best wonder in the entire game, Golden Gate Bridge. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Golden Gate Bridge, I actually think is a uh, uh, pretty god-awful wonder, and I'm going to throw it into F tier here. I think this is our first F tier. I think it's one of those wonders that is just not useful at all. You, you get plus three amenities from it, which is, I mean, that's nice. Uh, plus four appeal to every single tile in that city. And you also gain a plus 100% tourism from improvements in national parks in that city. But the problem is, is that it is very difficult to build this wonder in any of your cities that it's gonna matter. Uh, if you're able to build, if you're able to build a uh, Golden Gate Bridge, that means you've settled a coastal city. And if you've settled a coastal city, that means you're probably not gonna be building a lot of national parks in that city. And since you, you know, because half of your tiles are gonna be built on the coast, right? Or because half of the tiles of your city are going to be a coast are going to be coastal tiles most of the time. Sometimes you can get away with it, where you have like maybe a really small tiny isthmus that you can build Golden Gate on. But even then, like I said, maybe only like a quarter of the tiles that you can you can build in your city are going to be national parks. So it's it's just generally not worth it to build. Uh, you get a nice little road, you know, you can you can use it as a road. But I mean, 
it is just it's just so rare it's so rare that this is going to be a useful wonder that most of the times you're just it's i build it as a meme anytime i build it i only build it as a meme so golden gate bridge i love you because i am from northern california and golden gate bridge is in san francisco but you are one of the worst wonders in the entire game <laughs> Uh, with that we move on to great bath now great bath gives you plus three housing you also get an, an amenity from it which is nice um now all of your flood pile flood plane tiles uh, which it has to be built on are immune to flood damage so it does uh it does act as a dam um additionally it does reduce the bonuses that you get from the flooding it's only by 50 percent but um the one nice thing about this is it gains plus one faith for every time flood damage is mitigated all of your flood plane tiles so you can get some really nice like four food two production like seven eight faith tiles just from having a uh, great bath there because of the amount of times that the the flood was mitigated now the only thing about this wonder i'm gonna put it into d tier the only reason why i don't generally like great bath that much is because in most of my games i want to be districting around floodplains generally generally i'm going to be districting around floodplains if you are you know floodplains are along a river and if you are settling along a river that means you're going to be putting your districts between cities and and most of the time those districts are going to be along the river so your floodplains are going to get destroyed anyway so i don't think building great bath to have like two tiles that can be affected by it is useful so this can be useful, definitely more useful than, you know, Golden Gate, for example, but I, I generally think it's not a fantastic wonder. It's also one of those wonders that is almost deity tier, like a Temadonki. It's generally gone before you can even think about building it, so uh, D tier for, for Great Bath. Um, to, we have all the, the great wonders right now. So this is Great Library. Uh, great Library gives you plus two science as well as a great scientist point per turn and, and two great works of writing. Now, you also gain... Uh, you also gain a random tech boost whenever a, another player recruits a great scientist. So I think because of that specifically, I'm going to put this into C tier. This is a fantastic wonder if you're playing as Babylon, uh, because if you are playing as Babylon, you can just speed through. I mean, because, right, it gives you a free boost. And if you play as Babylon, anytime you get a boost instead of just getting the boost you gain the whole tech so late game this is a super important wonder to have because you can just speed through the late game wonders that you can only boost by really you know researching it or stealing it with a spy uh so this is a this is one of those wonders that works really well with with babylon but other than that it is very difficult to get it's another classical era wonder it belongs into the deity tier with a temenonki and great bath and by the time you try to get it because you have to go into recorded history to get it it's usually gone um so uh, but it's still a good wonder to get if you if you can get it. So I'm going to throw it into C tier. I think that's a very good spot for it to be in. Moving on to the Great Lighthouse. Uh, great Lighthouse is... Uh, I, I just think it's not a great wonder. It's it's into D tier. Um, for me, it's, it's unlocked in Celestial Navigation. And it's just one of those ones where it's only useful in one situation. And that's generally just for naval domination games. Now, like I said, Naval Dom, this is a fantastic wonder to get. You get plus one movement for all of your naval units, as well as a great admiral point per turn. Um, it has to be ne built next to a lighthouse, or sorry, a harbor that has a lighthouse uh, next to the coast. But if you're playing a Naval Dom game, you're going to be getting those anyways. But other than that, this is a uh, useless wonder. So I have it into D tier because it's specifically geared towards Naval Dom games. And if you're not doing that, there's kind of really no reason to, to get this because um, that plus one movement doesn't really matter. So D tier, Great Lighthouse. Moving on to Great Zimbabwe. This wonder, just like Forbidden City, is one of those ones that I often forget about. Um, it, it's in, you unlock it in Renaissance. It gives you plus two great merchant points per turn and plus one trade route capacity. Now, the, the main thing about it and that why people like it is you, every single trade route from the city that you build it in gets plus two gold for every bonus resource in that city's territory. And it, the thing is it has to be net built next to a cattle and a commercial hub district so you kind of have to play it's it's one of those wonders that is really hard to plan out um the only reason why i generally don't build this wonder and why i don't think it's super strong is because i often chop most of my bonus resources the extra things that you get from the bonus resources for example the if you're if you have stone in your city i'd much rather chop the stone because that extra production you get instantly is generally more beneficial plus you can build a mine there 
Uh, cattle, uh, I generally keep cattle because you get the nice production from from pastures, uh, but like rice and stuff like that, marshes I'll generally chop. Well, marshes is a feature, but rice I'll generally chop. You know, wheat I will chop unless I need the that housing. So Grace and Bobboy, I think it has potential of being decent, so I'll throw it into C tier because that gold could be pretty good. Um, especially if you, especially since it's every single trade route gets the extra bonus resource. So if you have, you know, uh, five or six extra bonus resources in that city and you build it alone in that city, you know, that's plus 10, 12 extra gold. And if you just put all of your trade routes into that city, then that's pretty nice. But more often than not, you're not going to be doing that and you're not going to get lucky enough to have it. So I think C tier is good the, just because of the potential that this has. Um, but in actuality, it's not going to get you anything near its potential. Hia Sophia is the next wonder that we're looking at here. And I think this is a, a really good wonder. I have Hia Sophia into B tier. Uh, it, it is one of those wonders that is pretty useful for, or pretty necessary for religious victories. Religious victories only require a couple wonders to build. And this is one of them. It gives you plus four faith, which is okay, whatever. But it, the main aspect of it is that it, all of your missionaries and apostles can give, they all gain a plus one extra use, plus one extra spread of religion. Uh, so I have this into B tier because it is obviously very useful for religious, religious victories. Um, it can be useful for like, you know, cultural and stuff like that. If you're using your apostles for just having a religion in the first place. Uh, so Hi Sophia B tier. I, I think that's just a pretty good place to have it. Um, like I said, it's, it's a, it's a good wonder and it's necessary for religion. And moving on to the hanging gardens, the hanging gardens are, I think another one of those wonders where it's, it is almost uh, almost impossible to get <laughs> in, in Civ. It's nearly deity tier. Uh, but because of its use, I'm going to put it in a C tier. Hanging Gardens gives you uh, plus two housing. Uh, it also increases your growth in all of your cities by 15%. Now, the main, the main thing about it is with the addition of Heroes and Legends game mode from the New Frontier Pass, all of your hero units have plus 10% increased lifespan, which is really nice to have. Um, if that didn't exist, this would probably be into D tier. Uh, but since that does, I'll, I'll throw it in a C tier here. It's, it is, I think it's even more so into deity tier than a Temenanki and, uh, Great Bath, but, uh, its usefulness is, is definitely a little bit more than Great Bath here. So C tier. Hermitage is another cultural wonder here. Um, I, I'm going to put Hermitage into C tier. I used to think it's better than Bolshoi, but if, if Bolshoi didn't Iran the, randomly give you the free civics, then I, this would be higher, but, um... Hermitage gives you three great artist points per turn as well as four great works of art slots. So that's another cultural wonder. If, if you're doing great work tourism that it's really nice to have, but I don't know. I, I always find it kind of lackluster because of where, where it is uh, in the culture tree. So Hermitage, C tier. All right. And moving on to, uh, I believe it's pronounced Wei, Wei, Teokali. Uh, this one here, I, I have this in B tier. I've always considered it a, a decent wonder. It gives you plus one amenity from uh, each adjacent lake tile. So if you place it, you want to place it in a lake that can surround way. Um, plus one food and production for each lake tile as well. I don't really care about that one too much. The uh, It's another one of those wonders that amenities just really matter now. So if you have a like three to four tile lake, that's an extra two to three amenities that you can get from this wonder. So I feel like B tier is pretty appropriate for it. it it's not as important as say um, Colosseum but oh it's a it's a cheap wonder it comes if mid mid gameish mid medieval era but oh b tier i think uh and then i think the next one is probably going to be one of the more controversial ones at least i mean at least in my mind a lot of people i think this is uh, maybe a controversial or at least for me most underrated wonder in the entire game and that is jebel uh, i have jebel also into b tier and people are probably gonna be very confused about this and for me i don't care about the iron that you get from Jebel. Um, it is classical era. Uh, what I care about is the faith from it. You have a possibility of gaining, you get plus four faith to your cities that are within six tiles of the city. So very similar to Colosseum in the same radius. But instead of getting amenities, you gain faith from it. And there is a high possibility of gaining like 20 to 30 faith, which in the early game, since you're building it classical era is a ton of faith, especially if you're playing a Civ that um, doesn't necessarily have a lot of faith. Maybe you're not playing a faith-based game, but you want to have some faith for a monumentality push in the mid game. 
Uh, I think, I don't know, I think Jebel is one of those super underrated uh, underrated wonders that a lot of people just only look at it and say, well, I don't need six iron per turn, why would I build that? Whereas I don't care about the iron aspect of it, I, I care about the, uh, the faith aspect. So a very underrated wonder, um, and I think uh, this might be a super controversial one. I can understand putting it into C or even D tier, but for me, I think B tier works out really well with it just because of how impactful it can be. And on to Kilwa Kisawani. This is our second S tier wonder here. Kilwa Kisawani is, I think, my favorite wonder in the entire game. Uh, it's just, it's so good. If you're unaware of what Kilwa Kisawani does, it gives you three envoys when you build it, which, which is nice to have. But the other aspect of it is it completely just snowballs you through the game by how many city-states you control. So when you are a suzerain of a city-state, um, that this specific city, so the city that builds Kilwa, gains 15% boost to the yields that are provided by that city state. So if you're getting, you know, the, the science boosts from a scientific city state, this specific city gains 15% of the boost of that yield provided by that one. Um, however, if you are the suzerain of two or more city states of that same type, you gain an additional 15% boost to all of your cities. So if you if you have multiple, this is this I love this wonder because it's really good for culture and and, and science games. If you have you know say for example Geneva, and your Susan of Geneva, Geneva Geneva gives you 15% science boost when you're not at war to with the uh, when you're not at war, and then you stack that with Kilwa Kisawani, and you have multiple scientific city states in the game. You're gaining an an insane like uh, uh, multiple insane percent modifier to all with science to all of your cities and you're in this in the city that you're that this is built in gains an additional 15 percent boost so i try to build this in my capital as much as possible because there's an there's just you can get an insane amount of culture and science from just kilwa kisawani that's a lot of my games that you see me with like 1200 science 1500 science 2000 science it's because i have this wonder here and i plug in the card at the end of the game that gives you the science or culture from Caesar and city states it, it's insane s tier easily s tier there's no way that this can be anything lower than that and off the back of Kilwa is Kodokuin. um Kodokuin, i initially had it into uh d tier but i think i'm gonna move it into c tier here Kodokuin gives you 20 percent faith in the city that it's built in and so if you're playing a city or playing a, a heavy faith-based game or even a culture game that has a lot of faith in uh, in your in one city like maybe your capital this can give you plus 20 percent extra faith from it now the warrior monks no, i don't care about warrior monks i've always been very much uh warrior monks are a an awful <laughs> an awful unit um but the 20 percent extra faith is really nice so i think i'm gonna bump it up from d tier to c tier just because that extra 20 percent can help boost you quite a bit in a in all of your games and then we have Machu Picchu. Now, Machu Picchu also falls into the quote-unquote deity category with a Temenanki uh, in Great Bath. But Machu Picchu gives you plus four gold. Okay, that's whatever. And then also what it does is it gives mountain tiles a standard adjacency bonus to commercial hubs, theater squares, and industrial zones. So if you are playing in a heavily mountainous area where you can squeeze all, either three of those districts in between mountains this is a very beneficial wonder but i mean i do play on i do play on deity so it is one of those wonders where if it's like impossible to get uh but even then let's even if i'm not playing on deity if i'm i'm playing on another type of uh difficulty i'm still gonna put machu picchu down in the d tier i don't think getting machu is as important I don't think the adjacency bonus for Machu Picchu is as important as, say, amenities or extra wildcard policy slots or anything along those lines. I think I think the adjacency bonus is cool. I think it's super niche, but I just don't think it's that important. Um, now, adding to the deity factor to it, you know, deity, it's just like there's literally no reason to rush this unless you just want to unless you want to get it for fun. Uh, I've gotten it a couple times just because I could. And you have to beeline machinery to get it, which is such a weird way to just, oh, or sorry, it's not machinery, it's engineering, a weird tech to get it. And it has to be built on a mountain tile too. So it's just one of those weird wonders that's difficult to get in a weird location. And the bonuses from it generally aren't amazing. So I don't know, D tier, it's whatever. But going right off the back of Machu, we have Mahabodhi Temple, and that is an A tier wonder. Mahabodhi Temple gives you four faith, but it gives you two apostles. Um, 
uh, it gives you, sorry, it gives you brand new two apostles. It's only 400 production, which is absolutely insane. Now it has to be built on a woods adjacent to a holy site and that holy site has to have a temple but the fact that this is only 400 production in the classical era and it gives you two free apostles basically guarantees you the ability to fin finalize your religion without having to spend faith on, on apostles this is a must for religious victories you have to get this one I mean, you don't have to but it's this if you want to win a religious victory fast this is the wonder that you need to get you can get Manakshi temple you can get you know kodoku in uh Hagia sophia but this is the one if, if you were to eliminate all of the wonders this is the one to get so my body temples considering how impactful it is on on religious victories and how good it is for even other victories that you're just trying to get a religion with uh get a finalize your religion in Getting two free apostles is very value, so A tier for Mob Bodhi. Probably my other second favorite wonder in this entire game. We have Mausoleum at Holoconassus. This is our third S tier wonder here. And this is another one of those wonders where it can be I, I feel like people use it for the wrong reasons. It does give you plus one science, faith, and culture on your coast tiles in this city. So a lot of people use it for like yield porn and and making thumbnails. I mean, I'm guilty of it using it to make thumbnails for, but I don't. I honestly don't care about the coastal yields. It's nice, but it's really not that impactful. What I care about is the fact that all of your great engineers now have an additional charge. All you have to do is build a harbor and then you build it on the coast next to the harbor and then it gives every single one of your engineers after that an additional charge. And you can even do sneaky things like use the great engineer emotep which builds classical era wonders basically in one turn you can use one charge of that and then when you build mausoleum at holocarnassus you gain that charge back because you gain additional charges on all of your great engineers after you build maz so you start with two charges you use one charge you're down to one charge but then you build maz and you gain an extra charge back so you basically just use a charge for free um it's just it's so impactful especially late game when you're trying to build wonders um you know using if you're going space race and you need to use uh a gustav eiffel to build a munson scott in three turns instead of having to chop it out you can build maz earlier and, and get the extra charge out so very very impactful wonder i think the second part of it the great engineer part of it is very underrated and a lot of people don't use it they use, mostly use it for the coastal yields which I just, I think yields in general on wonders aside from a Temenanki are, are pretty useless. So S tier, mausoleum. And moving right along to Minakshi Temple, I'm just gonna throw it straight into D tier. D -tier. Even in religious victories, I think this, um, I don't know. I think it's I think it's kind of whatever. If Unless you're playing multiplayer, um, Minakshi Temple, the extra five combat strength, I don't really care about. You're not really doing a lot of theological combat in your victories. In your religious victories most of the time you have enough apostles and uh missionaries that you don't even need to worry about engaging in in killing apostles um because if you are playing a religious victory all you're caring about is going into theocracy building ma bodhi temple and then just spamming apostles once you once you slot in theocracy so it, gurus uh, i mean yeah sure it's nice to have just to, so that way you know your your units can be healed in case they they start getting attacked but I don't know. I don't think it's that impactful. I think that's one of the least impactful wonders to religious victory, at least for me. There's an argument to be made that you get two free gurus from it, so sure. Um, and they're really cheap, a lot cheaper to pur purchase, but I don't know. Don't really care. D tier for Minakshi. Uh, Mont Saint Michel. This is one of those wonders that I've started to build a lot more lately. Um, I think it's, I, at least for me, I, I believe that it's a, a lot better than I used to think it was. Uh, so I'm going to throw it into B tier here. What it does is it gives you two relic slots, which is nice, um, but it also gives all of your apostles the martyr ability, which means every time a, an apostle dies in theological combat, it gains a relic. And that is very important for culture games where in culture you uh, you want, um, especially if you take reliquaries, the, the religious uh, aspect of, or sorry, that religion, getting reliquaries for your religion, which increases all of the tourism from your uh religious what's the word i'm looking for um i guess you know relics uh religious tourism that's the word i'm looking for so mont saint michel is a very very good wonder it it has to be built on a floodplain or a marsh but the fact that you just gain two extra relic slots and then all of your apostles from now on gain the martyr ability you can just spam apostles in the mid game and throw them at the uh throw them at the ai and they'll kill them and you just gain uh gain relics for free so 
I used to think this wasn't that that great, uh, but the more I've been playing, the more I've been enjoying it. So uh, I threw it into B tier. Now on to probably what is going to be another very very controversial uh, wonder here. Oracle. It's going into F. No, I'm just kidding. It's not going into F tier. <laughs> uh, I have I have Oracle into A tier. Now there are some people who are probably going to argue with me on this, and I think that's fair. I think they're they're going to either argue that it it belongs in S tier or into B tier. I think the majority of people are going to think that Oracle belongs in the S tier, and I can I can understand the reasoning why. I mean, I do try to build it in nearly every game, but I don't think it's as impactful as people think it is. I th I, I do think that it is very good. Uh, all of your districts gaining plus two great people points per type. If this is one of the first wonders you build in the game, because you do gain it in the ancient era, it'll it basically doubles your effective amount of great people purchasing point or great people points per turn um so that is that is insane value right there especially if you are trying to get out great scientists early on or even trying to get great writers out early on um the fact that also your great people now cost 25 percent less faith to faith purchase them i think is pretty huge especially in culture games when you are using your faith to to sometimes buy them really fast um now it does in oh yeah and also in yeah i forgot with the heroes and legends mode it also makes your heroes 15 percent cheaper as well when you're recalling them with faith so i do think all of those are very great the part of oracle that i think i think the plus two great people points of their type isn't as important as some of the other things like amenities or the extra builder charge or the percentage that you get from killwa i think these these three things are just a eke out a little bit more importance in these great people points early on in the game because getting a great scientist such as Hy Hypatia for example is really not as impactful as gaining the amenities and the extra production and growth that you get from Colosseum from having positive amenities. Um, I do think it's very very good which is why I have it up here in A tier but I think it's just just less important than these three. I would much rather miss out on Oracle, but get a guaranteed Colosseum, Killwa, and a Mausoleum in a game, especially if I'm going on a space race game. Uh, instead of, uh, yeah, I would just much rather get these three than, than Colosseum. Now, or sorry, than Oracle. Now, I do try to build it every game because it is available, but sometimes it does go by turn 50, so... I think, I think A tier is very valid for it. Um, I could see a very good argument made for S tier. I could also see a very good argument made for B tier, but I, I kind of split the middle and I, I put it into A. I believe I'm pronouncing this right. I think it's Orshagaz, but I please, please correct me if I'm 100% wrong. Uh, Industrial Era Wonder gives you plus four culture on 100% Diplo favor per turn from the turn starting as a, uh, or the starting turn as the suzerain of a specific city state. This is one of those wonders where I think at first it sounds amazing, but as time goes on, it doesn't really matter. And so I'm gonna throw it into D tier. I, I think it's a high D tier. I think it's just below C. Um, like I said, it gives you the culture, like most of these wonders that give you just a little bit, like for example, this gives you plus four culture per, per turn. It's, that doesn't really, it's not really that impactful, right? It's the, uh, modifying ability that you really care about and the fact that this one gives you plus 100% diplo favor per turn that I mean that's really nice um, but building a 900 production wonder <laughs> in the mid game when you're probably I don't know you're probably utilizing or you sold as much diplo favor as you can to the AI I could see this being useful in a diplo game but other than that I don't know I don't think it's that impactful. I don't think it's that great. I don't, I don't know. D tier. That's all I got to say about D tier. All right. Oxford. Uh, Oxford is a fantastic wonder to have. I used to think it was the end all be all. You had to build it in every science game. And I think it's a great one, but I don't think it's... Uh, I, th I think it's good. I'm just going to put it in A tier. We'll just, we'll just call it that. It's a good wonder. It gives you plus 20% science in your city and awards two free techs whenever you complete it. So you can stack this really hard with... For example, Kilwa Kisawani, if you throw Kilwa in your cap, as well as Oxford University in your cap with maybe Oracle, and then you put Pingala in there, you're going to be getting an insane amount of science per turn. So uh, I do think it's a very good wonder. I don't think it's S tier. Um, I think there is a case to be made for it to being S tier, but I think A tier is just fine. So not too much to talk about it. Gives you two great works of writing, which is kind of cool, but I, yeah, A tier for Oxford. Now to the best wonder in the entire game, Panama canal <laughs> just kidding. it's going it's going straight into f tier this thing's dog shit uh off the back of that i think i actually have a <laughs> i think i have another controversial opinion here with petra 
I think Petra is the most overrated wonder in the entire game. Um, it does make Petra, it does make desert cities workable and like decent cities, but I think the plus two food, plus two gold, and plus one production on all desert tiles for that city kind of makes this. I don't know. I think you, it's kind of worthless. I mean, not worthless. Okay, it makes the desert tile like desert tiles are worthless, right? And this makes them workable. Um, so you want you basically the only type you want a Petra city is when that city has a ton of hills. When it just has a ton of ton of hills, so you can turn them all into mines and make it into a giga production city. But even then, I would just rather have a grassland city. Uh, I'm gonna put it into C tier because it does give really good benefits. But I think, like, you know, it does kind of the same thing as Moz does with its yield porn. Like, everyone likes to look at Petra tiles and be like, oh, my God, look at these desert tiles. They're so good. There's so many yields on them. I love them so much. But if you just compare it flat out to a grassland or a, a, a grass or a plain city, it just doesn't hold any water to it, right? So I, I think it's good in that it turns desert cities into shit. I mean, not shit, to greatness, great cities, but... I just don't like desert cities in general. So I think C tier, I, that's where I have Petra. It's That's going to be a very controversial one. I think people are going to shit on me. Although I think people are going to think it's supposed to be A tier, even S tier, but I don't know. C tier. It's fine. Potato Palace. Patala Palace. Hey, spuddies. This is, uh, this is one of those wonders where I think I didn't really understand what it did for a long time well i understand what it did i just didn't care enough about it um but i think i think potato palace is tall palace is in a b tier here i used to have it in the a but i'm gonna throw it into b tier it gives you two culture three faith but it also gives you one diplomatic policy slot so you get an extra diplo slot as well as one diplo point whenever you're building it so this is a necessary wonder if you're trying to do diplo victory um i i took it down from a to b because i don't think like, this is not as impactful as I think these three are to, to games, except for Diplo Victory, right? Like, these, all of these wonders here can be impactful to mul a multitude of types of games, except for maybe Christo, just for culture. But uh, this is specific to Diplomatic Victories. So, I think B tier is very fair for it. And on to Pyramids, which is the exact opposite. Pyramids is another S tier wonder. This wonder is just absolutely insanely good um you get a free builder and then every other builder that is built after you build pyramids i uh, just said build like four times <laughs> they get an extra improvement similar to how with Moz, all engineers gain an extra charge every single builder after that gets an extra charge of using an improvement so uh your builders all start with four charges now and then you run serfdom and they gain six and if you have a city with liang in it they now have seven charge builders, so very powerful wonder. Has to be built on a desert tile, um, but that just extra charge just makes this incredibly useful for every single victory type. So uh, S tier pyramids, fantastic. And it's uh, Rar Valley time. Uh, Rar Valley it gives you plus twenty percent production in the city that it's built. Uh, additionally, it gives you plus one production to all of your mines and quarries that are in that city. And this is here is another A tier wonder. This is a great wonder, uh, specifically for science victories. You want this in your capital or whatever city that you're going to be pumping out space projects in. Um, th this is just such a great wonder. You want at least I, in my cities that I try to that I get rare, I try to get at least ten mines in that city. Um, I try to limit the amount of districts. So Rur Valley generally is not my capital city. It's my second or third city. Most of the time I try to settle a third or second city with a lot of mines in it to, to get Rear Valley in. So I'll only have like two to three districts in that city. Um, that way I don't take up precious mine tiles. But this is a great wonder. It's it's fantastic. Um, yeah, A tier for me. St. Basil's Cathedral. Uh, this one is one of those wonders where just similar, I don't know, I, for me, I don't care about the Petra wonders. <laughs> Like, I care about this wonder in the fact it is A tier. It's a great wonder, but not because of the, pe the the Petra type yield stuff that you can get from it. You get plus three relic slots, and you also get plus one food production and culture from all the tundra tiles that you build the city in. So it does make for a non tundra sieve, like if you aren't, you know, playing Peter or Canada, this does make a tundra city like semi viable. But the main aspect of this that I care the most about is the 100% religious tourism from the city. So pairing this with Cristo Redentor uh, and then Mabodi Temple, if you're trying to do a reliquaries culture game, just makes this 
absolutely insane in, in say for example your capital city um this is this is a very fantastic wonder for culture it, it, the yields are whatever i generally don't even build a city to get the yields off of this i use this in like my cap or my second city because of how strong the 100 percent religious tourism is so uh a tier a tier for saint basil's i think once you once you take away the the like they're nice right the petra yields are nice for all of these wonders here but once you take that aspect away you look at the secondary part of the wonder and you realize how useful that is like this is only useful for the for the petra part of it right this is useful more so than the petra part and same with mausoleum so that's where i have it that's why i have these that's how i i rank these specific wonders at least now on the statue of liberty Statue of Liberty is just uh, one of those wonders where if it wasn't useful for one victory type, it would be an F tier, but it's in D tier. It, it gives you plus one, sorry, plus four victory dip, diplo points when you're trying to do a diplo victory. Um, and all your cities within six tiles are 100% loyal. Yeah, whatever. Don't care. Who cares about that? All you care about with this wonder, the only time you're ever really going to build this is when you're trying to win a diplo victory. And that is uh, plus four diplo points. That is a lot that is one fifth of your victory condition for diplo victory so the fact that it is only specifically for diplo means it's it's in d tier not an f tier otherwise it would just be straight d or f tier just like these two so yeah statue another statue uh this one of zeus statue of zeus it, it kind of falls into the same aspect as statue of liberty does it gives you plus three gold um, but also gives you for free three spearmen three archers and a battering ram now i don't remember if the math of those the production of all seven of those items is less than the wonder i believe it is the wonder is 400 production in post i'll do the calculations and tell you here um it also gives you plus 50 percent production towards anti-calves now this is d tier and the only reason why this is d tier and and uh because of shaka if shaka was not in the game or if gorgo was in the game this would be an F tier, mostly because anti-cav is just absolutely terrible. I do not care about anti-cav. Unless you're building impies or unless you're Gorgo who already gets hoplites and extra bonuses to anti-cavalry, anti-cav is one of the worst things to build in the entire game. Um, they they do worse towards melee units. They are they're really good at killing ranged units, but by the time you have your you know get in range to kill them, the range units are going to destroy them. They, even then, I would just yeah. I don't know if I'm fighting tanks. I don't want anti cavs. I'd rather just have like one really strong musketman or you know one really strong melee core fighting it instead of a anti cav core. So D tier for Statue of Liberty. I just the 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 nuance, the niche abilities of it are cool, and but they only really benefit one to two civs. Now Stonehenge, Stonehenge is going to be in the F tier, but it's going to be its own special little tier right here. It's going to it's it's going to be a little tier here that uh this is actually deity tier right here. <laughs> this is deity tier never going to get. And uh we're going to put that right here to the side cuz Stonehenge in multiplayer games is an amazing amazing wonder right you get a free great profit from it and you don't even have to build a holy site you can just found the religion on on the on stonehenge instead of it so this is deity tier you're never gonna get this on deity unless you're playing as china and you beeline it to chop it out immediately other than that you're never gonna get this this is ancient era you get it in astrology and even on deity the only time you're gonna get it is if you spawn near a wonder and you get the boost for astrology uh it, yeah and also the weird caveat about it is it has to be built next to stone too so if you don't spawn next to stone you're very you're screwed so yeah f tier but it's in its own deity tier never going to get don't even try there's no point in trying unless you're trying to get an achievement oh, after that dumpster fire of a uh, stonehenge we're going into sydney opera house which i'll admit I used to think it was really good, uh, and then I've played, like I said, I have 2,000 hours into this game now, so I think I'm going to throw it down into D tier. I, I think it's okay for culture victories. The problem is, is it comes so late that I generally don't really care about it that much. It gives you five musician points per turn and three great works of music. Um, but what you can do is instead of trying to build a Sydney Opera House, you could just build a bunch of broadcast centers and 
uh, just get those extra slots right there um considering just how late you get it right it's atomic era if it was sooner or you could get it faster then it might be a little bit more powerful but because of how late it gets and because i try to like sub 200 every single culture game it, it falls pretty low on the priority list and uh, taj mahal uh taj mahal is b tier um it's a good wonder it it basically not guarantees but more or less allows you to get a golden age in every single era um, you get plus one error score from historic moments earned after the wonder is, is completed. Uh, if that moment is usually worth two or more error score. So you just get extra error score. Um, and that just compounds every single time you, you get error score. So it's a good wonder. B tier, I think, is completely fine. It's only 900 production. You get it in the Renaissance era. So after that, you know, when you're having a hard time getting Golden Ages after that, because sometimes it can be, uh, Taj Mahal kind of guarantees it. So yeah, that's fair. B tier. T-O-A, Temple of Artemis. In all of my games, you'll hear me just call it T-O-A. So if you are confused, that's what it stands for. Is Temple of Artemis, Temple of Artemis. Um, very cheap, early game wonder. You get it at archery and in the ancient era. And that's actually going into S tier for me. Um, it gives you a plus one amenity for every single camp, pasture, or plantation within four tiles of the wonder. Uh, not the city, but the wonder. That's a very important caveat. Um, it does give you plus four food and three housing, which that three housing is really nice early on. But the amenities aspect of it is insane. The fact that you can, you'll need to strategically place it through in your empire to get the, uh, get really good bonuses. And uh, like, so you want to try to treat it similar to Colosseum, you know, to Jebel. But instead of putting it you know, in any old spot, you want to put it so where you can maximize the amount of camps, pastures, and plantations that are within four tiles of this wonder. Uh, I've gotten games where I've gotten five, six, seven amenities just from getting TOA in my cap. So very good wonder, very, very strong. Amenities, as you'll notice, are very important in Civ 6. They used to not be, uh, but that final patch that they did where they changed how amenities affect uh, happiness they, they changed the threshold for ecstatic cities and happy cities made amenities so much more important to get so getting Colosseum getting out uh, getting out Temple of Artemis you know getting out Estadio if you can it's not as important because of how late it is but you know getting these amenity wonders are a lot more important than they used to be so if amenities were like how they, they used to be this would probably only even be B tier to be honest but uh, I have it up in S just because of how nice it is and how strong that early game boost of four food and three housing on top of the amenities already is. Uh, there's three, three left, four left, four left here. Uh, Terracotta Army. This is one of those weird wonders that I, it's a very good, I'm going to throw it into C tier. Um, this is a, the reason, or sorry, not C tier. Wait, do I have it in C tier? Let me look at my notes. Sorry, B tier. Whew. People are probably going to murder me for that. Uh, the, what this, the main thing that this does is it allows all of your current land units, so every single unit that you have on the field gains an, a, a promotion for free. Uh, it also gives you great general points per turn, but it also another weird thing about it is it gives all of your archaeologists can open foreign lands without open borders. So if you are going a culture victory you, and you want to do archaeological stuff, getting this is actually kind of a key wonder because normally you have to have open borders, but there's people denouncing you. You know, you can't go into their land. So this is one of those weird ones that you kind of want to build in culture victories. Not every single time, but sometimes you do. But this is also really useful for if you are, you know, in the middle of a war and a lot of your units are like super low health, very close to dying. You can build terracotta really quickly and they all gain a promotion and they'll heal off of that promotion. So um, this is a, a really good wonder to have. It is, you know, mostly for domination, but there are other aspects to it too. I actually use it in science victories. I build it near the end of the game where you want to get a lot of pillages off with light cavalry units because oh, I can't remember which exact promotion it is, but there's a promotion that, that allows your light calves to only use one movement point to pillage. So if you, you know, you only have plus one promoted, um, like cavalry, you'll uh, you'll want to get this to to get. I think it's depredation is the name of it to get the second promotion. So eh, B tier. I think it's a decent decent wonder. Tora Nobellum is one of the other new wonders that was added in the New Frontier past alongside a Temidonki and Statue of Zeus. This one is very. I mean, this one was obviously geared towards Portugal, right? It came out the same time as Portugal. Uh, all of your international trade routes from this city that Tora is built in receive plus two gold for every luxury resource at the destination. 
Uh, and whenever it's constructed, all of your cities that are not on your home continent, they receive the lowest production cost building that they can currently build. So, you know, if you have a brand new campus in a city that's not on the same continent as that this is built in, it'll receive a library, for example. Uh, you also get an, uh, a great Admiral point per turn and plus five gold. This is one of those wonders that I, is, it's just, it sounds really great in theory and on paper, but in practice just turns out to not, not be amazing. And it's only useful for, say, for uh, Portugal, sometimes Spain, but D tier for Tora, it, it is one of those wonders, like I said, that sounds great in theory, but in practice just generally doesn't pay off. The final two, University of St. Cor and Venetian. Uh, University of St. Cor, medieval era wonder. It is another one of those wonders that uh, it's 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 very hard to think about ever building. I'm gonna put it into D tier. It does give you extra science in your city, so plus three science, plus one faith. You get ex two extra great scientist points per turn, and then two science for every trade route to this city. Um, your domestic trade routes do give you an extra faith per turn, um, and then other civs trade routes to the city gain that give that civ plus one science, plus one gold. So it's nice for like scientific research agreement cities, but I just find it's medieval era, it's 700 production and in a desert city, I'd rather build, I don't know, basically anything else than this. It's nice, it's okay for, but there's so much, like I'd, I'd even rather build Petra than this. So I think D tier is is very fair for University of St. Cor. Especially if you're building it in a Petra city, the only time I would ever really utilize the extra trade routes to this, right? The reason why it's so low for me is because in scientific games that you are wanting to get a lot of science, you generally want to have your trade routes be in your capital, especially mid to late game, because then you get to use uh, the extra trade route, domestic trade route production and trade routes from your city with democracy. So uh it, the the extra science trade route ability that you get from university saint core doesn't really pay off so yeah d tier and the final wonder venetian arsenal this is going up here s tier a league of its own the best wonder in the entire game <laughs> no it's really not uh venetian i have in c tier i know a lot of people have this down into f tier but i have it in c tier because it has a very specific purpose um and I think the purpose is a little bit more important than say, for example, well, uh, okay, I guess I guess you could put it into D tier. I'm gonna put it into C tier because I like it personally more than statue. Uh, if you don't know what it does, you receive a second, every time you build, so once, once you build Venetian, every time you train a new naval unit in your, in, a, in any city, you gain a second one for free. So you gain two naval units every time you train a, uh, train one in a city and I used to think it was only in the city that this was built but it's in every single city in your empire so so if you're doing a naval dom game this is a f this is like a s tier wonder for you to build uh, because you can do silly things like pre-build you know uh, a bunch of quadrireams after you build Venetian and then um, leave you know your frigates your frigate technology on one turn left to research and then you know you build you build Venetian you build out you, you take like 10 production turns of sorry you could take like 10 cities to build quadrimes and now you have 20 quadrimes because you built venetian it, it, it's kind of a, a bonkers wonder when you get it going and it helps out a lot late game for naval dom 2 where if you maybe didn't build a lot of ships but you build venetian and then you have battleships out now you can spam battleships in a couple cities and you'll you'll gain double the amount of battleships it, it can be a really strong wonder now c tier for me just because i it only has one use you do get two great engineer points per turn, but it's really only used for the double wonders. And so since it only gets one used, it could be into D tier because it's basically the same thing as, you know, uh, Statue of Liberty. It only benefits one victory condition. Uh, but I like it personally as a wonder, so I'm throwing it into C tier. All right. There it is. This is the, the final list. Um... I don't know. I'm pretty satisfied with it. The the B and C tier is I don't know. It's it got a nice little bell curve. I I probably could have shuffled a few of these three, like especially B and C tier. Like some of these could be argued. Like Oracle could be B B tier, right? Kotaku Win could be B tier. Um, Zimbabwe can be B tier, so on and so forth. But 
I think this is pretty strong. I, I, I agree with, like, I went over this, like, probably six or seven times, checking every single wonder, thinking about how I I would play them in a game that they're, the victory condition is geared towards, so. So, yeah. Uh, what, do you, what do you guys think about it? You should tell me in the comments how much you hate my <laughs> rankings of these wonders, or how much you agree with them. Uh... If you think Oracle should be S tier, please let me know. Um, also, if I pronounced, you know, or should cause incorrectly, please let me know as well. Uh, but yeah, that's going to do it for the World Wonder tier list. Uh, if you guys are new to my content, if you don't know who I am, I do stream Civilization VI on Twitch.tv every Tuesday through Friday at 12 p.m. Pacific time, except for Fridays at 2. Um, and if you do enjoy this content, if you liked the this tier list, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps out a lot more than you think. You get to see my numbers go burr, and also you get to see when all of my content comes out. So, uh, Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye! Bye! -bye, bye.